Necropolis is not a good game and probably one of the most disappointing ones I've played in 2016 so far. And I've been waiting to play Necropolis since March last year when they first showed gameplay at PAX 2015. A third person action game with randomly generated areas, permadeath, a cool visual aesthetic, and playable with up to three of your friends in co-op. It looked and sounded like an infinitely replayable version of Dark Souls. It sounded awesome, but it's not awesome because it falls short on every single seemingly positive aspect I just mentioned. Of course, on paper, the idea of a permadeath Souls game with randomly generated levels sounds awesome, but in reality, it's poorly executed. The result being an amalgamation of cool ideas smushed together into a mess of a game that's not only unfun, but just boring to play. The first shitty thing I noticed about Necropolis right off the bat was with the controls, the movement, the weapon animations, just, just the animation in general. It's like they wanted the flow of the animation to reflect the game's visuals. Sheen and simple. Sure, it's a commendable concept to try and merge both visuals and animation to coincide with one another, but I feel it ends up being more of a detriment to the game rather than a benefit. It's like the developers set out with the intention of making a really polished combat system with fluid animations, but as soon as the animators got to the point where their animations worked, they just stopped, reviewed, and said to themselves, eh, that's good enough. What this amounts to is a movement system that feels rigid, with combat animations that just feel clunky to properly execute on enemies. Compare this to Dark Souls, the game that Necropolis takes heavy influence from, which has some of the best movement and combat animations I've ever seen in a video game to date. The only games that really compare, or in some case do it better, are the Bayonetta and Witcher series. Generally, a lot of the flaws Necropolis has lie in its inability to properly replicate its source material. For example, Necropolis prides itself in marketing its supposedly innate difficulty. On the Steam store page, the end of the game's description reads, Spoilers, you'll probably die trying. This is quite similar to the phrase, prepare to die, which was used as a marketing slogan for the original Dark Souls, and it simply implies that the game is not easy, because you're gonna die over and over and over if you play the game. So it's pretty safe to assume that with a catchphrase like, you'll probably die trying, Necropolis should be a pretty hard game. Well, it's not. It's probably one of the easiest games I've played not only this year, but ever. The first hour of the game seemed promising, but after that, it just felt like it was dragging on and on and on. It's just a mind-numbingly monotonous trudge through an endless, uninspiring series of hallways. I played a total of four hours on release day, by the end of which I had reached the seventh level, and also achieved a level of boredom I hadn't felt since Duke Nukem Forever, which actually managed to put me to sleep when I played it. It wasn't until three weeks later when I decided to muster up the will to crawl through the final two levels of the game, and I probably would have had this video out sooner if I didn't feel obligated to complete the game before making a video about it. And honestly, I wish I just had have made the video and ignored those final two levels, because they did not change the shape of my opinion on this game in the slightest. For one, I had already experienced a good majority of the game, and those last two levels really didn't add anything new besides more recolored enemies. Secondly, I had a lingering hope of a final boss battle at the end of the game, and well, there was a final boss battle if you could really call it that. It, like everything else in this game, was massively underwhelming. I beat the game, and I only died once! And that single death was very close to the beginning of the game when I was still getting accustomed to my controls, and I was also diverting a portion of my attention to my livestream chat. So, realistically, if I take that into account, I didn't even die a single time during the entire playthrough of a game that markets itself as being hard. That's pathetic. This game is just so incredibly easy because it's so poorly designed. It's like every single NPC in this game has been programmed with three extremely basic behaviors. Idle, chase, and run. Every single enemy acts the exact same way in every single encounter. They will just mindlessly chase after you as soon as you enter their aggro range, and then proceed to chase you and attack you until they die. Whereas smaller harmless monsters will just run away as soon as you get close to them. The lack of enemy variety doesn't help either, because this game has so many goddamn reskins of previously fought enemies. There's the angry hobo, the angry hobo in armor, the angry drunk hobo in armor, this thing, that thing, this guy, that guy. Healing ingredients and items are shoved down your character's throat to the point where you will never run out of the materials needed to craft another tier one potion or a tier three iron ration. Also, why are tiers the only determining factor of any item's quality and usefulness? Name, flavor text, tier, that's all the information that's given about any item in this game. Of course, it's obvious that a tier three item is gonna be much better than a tier two item, but by how much? How much armor does this armor give me? How much damage does this sword do? How much health does this potion heal me for? 
how much health do I even have? I'm actually starting to think that these devs didn't even play a Souls game, but really just read on some website that the game's supposed to be cryptic, hard, and full of deep lore. Well, newsflash, you fucking fassos! This is what the item screen in Dark Souls looks like. A plethora of information and statistics. Not this. This is nothing. It's empty and pointless. Words that also clearly describe the game's procedurally generated levels. Just like I said earlier, having to slowly wade through and explore these bland environments feels like a chore. Every single area of this game ends up looking exactly the same because the art style is so flat and lifeless. And I'm someone who's usually really good at memorizing and visualizing a 3D space in my head, but even I manage to get lost in this labyrinth of unending gradient walls. And having procedurally generated areas does not help poorly programmed AI to be able to properly path and find a way around the tiniest of obstacles. There were so many instances when enemies would end up stuck inside of poorly generated geometry or end up running in place stuck on a knee-high 90 degree angled terrain. And well... To this day, I still have some kind of gift. Devs would probably love me to playtest their games, as I'd single-handedly be able to find and cause any game to ship with zero bugs, since I somehow managed to find glitches in every single game I play. Everything about this game just reeks of mediocrity. There are hardly any redeemable factors. The combat is clunky, the movement feels awkward, the enemy AI is horrible and broken. It's so easy that you can beat it in under six hours without dying a single time. And the music, which, well, I forgot to talk about so far, is also forgettable. You either hear a generic mystical exploration music, or the tense battle music, or the slightly more tense battle music. I just turned it off and listened to JoJo music instead. So the final thing left to talk about is the cooperative play, which I didn't even get to try since none of my friends wanted to waste $30 and play this game with me. If I had played the game in co-op, would I have had more fun than I would have playing on my own? Probably, but not nearly enough to warrant a $30 purchase, at most. I'd say this game is worth about 5 to 10 bucks during a Steam sale. And only if you have a friend to play it with who wants to suffer with you for a couple of good hours on a boring afternoon. But if you want to play Necropolis alone, don't even bother getting it. <laughs>